Welcome to camp night two. Yesterday, outside of Zion National Park, spectacular camp spot. It was so good that I didn't want to interrupt it with talking to you. I just wanted to show you how awesome that spot was and then follow that up with our day inside of Zion National Park, riding the e-bikes and just going through the park, doing kind of the tourist thing, which was fun. Being a local to Utah, I rarely get to be a tourist in my own state. So that was a blast. And then we just hightailed it out of there and we found this spot. So this is camp tonight. The whole point of this trip is we're trying to hit all five of Utah's national parks in one go. So Zion, check it off the list, it's done. Uh, hopefully tomorrow we make it as far as Bryce. We've got a fun trail planned that's not a direct route. I mean, none of this is fully pavement. So we're really trying to make it as overland as we can. Tonight, I'm gonna cook up some quesadillas and things. I uh, may try and squeeze in a little bit of an off-road shower, but what can I say? I'm happy that we are out here and this is gonna be a blast of a trip. I have showered, I have eaten. I even got stuck in the shower because the Julka shower's batteries died. So we had to get all freaking creative, but I'm clean, I've eaten. We have a small little fire and I am filming this without a light. That's moonlight and maybe a little bit of like our dim little uh, Devos over there, but I'll walk away from that. Moonlight, it is so bright out. Uh, I'm going to attempt a time lapse and then crawl into bed. Who knows what I'll get with the moon. I think my time lapse yesterday sucked, but I don't know. It's in this video. If it's in this video, you and I know together now. Future Justin knows. Current Justin doesn't. Well, I think that worked. I did get some good sleep about midway through the night. I stopped that time lapse because the wind was picking up. And you know how when you're in sleep brain, like start thinking fantastical thoughts well I kept thinking that it was falling over and that I was on a Hollywood set and they were getting mad at me for breaking their cine lenses so I, I don't know why but I woke up and I was like I gotta stop the time lapse so I stopped it in the middle of the night it was about four in the morning and it was freezing it got super cold last night luckily I had my electric blanket so that did keep me warm but here we are I slept in <laughs> I think because I slept so poorly leading up to me stopping the time lapse and then slept so well after the time lapse that I slept in and it's like 10 o'clock now. So we're just packing up camp. I've been reorganizing some things with the Bronco. This is a constant work in progress, figuring out where I like stuff, things I access most and, and wanna have access to. So did a bunch of that just now and now I'm gonna start taking down this tent. Uh, a little bit about this tent. This is not my tent. This is not a new tent for me. I'm reviewing this tent. Uh, this is the new Rome Adventure Co. tent. Uh, I was all over their website with it, and then I got this one to borrow for this trip. So look forward to that review, but yeah, this is not a permanent fixture on Major Tom. My Go Fast will be coming back soon. Uh, but uh, I gotta tear down and we gotta turn this into a real trip.
With the air down ritual complete, it's safe to say that the adventure is really ready to get started. Up until now, it's just been tourism. So we've got a lot of elevation gain to do, a lot of miles to cover. We're taking the long way to Bryce Canyon. If we get there today, awesome. If we don't, it's adventure and that's how it goes. I'm so ready to get inside of this green stuff and out of the desert. All right, we found camp and uh, I'm really excited because I get to play with a new toy. Uh, my mother-in-law actually gave me this for Christmas this year in case I got in situations like this where we are in an area that has recently been cleared by BLM, so there's a bunch of felled trees. So this is my little, uh, what do they call it, a bansa bow saw. And it compiles real small, super small thing. I love it. Uh, I'm gonna put my gloves on before I open this because it is a sharp blade and I don't wanna be an idiot and cut myself on camera. I will link these below. Oh yeah, look how cool this is. The guys at Giver, they put my logo on my gloves. How cool is that? All right, so this thing is kind of funny. It just unfolds and then the blade is kept safe like so and you have to just butterfly it backwards. There's a little notch in the handle and it just Let's it roll right in and keep the tension. See, good thing I had gloves on, I would have pinched myself. All right, so now we are good to cut the log we need to cut for our fire, so follow me. So because I was entrusted with fire duty, I have entrusted Rob with dinner duty. Burgers. So he's gonna make a burger. I'm gonna have one sans bun. And I, I, I think it'll be all right. I can even put cheese on it. So that's good. I can have cheese, I can have a burger, and I'll put it on a bed of lettuce. Boom, sticking to the diet. Meet Morning Justin. This is what I look like when I wake up and uh, I get out of the tent. <laughs> Flattering, I know. Uh, but this morning I am going to be using my new geyser shower. Uh, yesterday we used the hot tap shower and it used so much water. We actually had to go refill up water yesterday when we refueled and did all that stuff. Uh, we had, there's probably 13 gallons we had to fill up. It was a lot of water, so this uh, uses about as much as a thirteenth of that, a gallon. And I bet I don't even use the whole thing to take a shower. I've used this once before. I like it. I think I'm still getting used to it and figuring out all the flows. But basically, in chamber one, you 
fill it up with water, cold water, doesn't matter. And it will heat the water, it takes about 30 minutes, plugs in via 12 volt. So I just have it plugged into my goal zero right now. And then uh, when it's heated, it'll be around, I think it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is warm, not like hot, but warm. And then uh, it'll just have an auto pump, pumps out through a little sponge. So it's more like a sponge bath than a full on shower, but it'll use a lot less water and I'll be able to get feeling fresh again. So that's what I'm doing this morning. I don't have a privacy tent, so hopefully the guys don't wake up too soon. I've got a door. This is, this is gonna be my get clean zone. <laughs> it's all I could think of because I don't have a privacy tent yet. The one that Rob has is really cool and I wonder if I could get it to fit in my box. If it fits up there, I'm gonna get that because that, that was really cool and then set it all up. It was, his is really good. I'll have to show you his next time they pop it open for showers. But yeah, gonna do a little morning shower with the geyser. A few minutes later. Shower update. I feel amazing. I feel just as clean and refreshed as I did with the hot tap shower. This was awesome. And uh, it took really just one canister to really, I felt like I was being generous in the amount of water I was using. Did, did great, I feel amazing. So now I just gotta kind of pack everything up. As far as wait time on getting it heated, I basically tore down camp, had some breakfast, kind of did my usual routine. And by the time I was done with that, this water was at 100 degrees. Last night it was just above freezing, so the water I put in was super cold. So I think it probably took about 40 minutes total to get that to 100 degrees. Worked great, used less than a gallon of water, and I feel fresh. Things are starting to get interesting on the trail this morning. We ran into a bunch of this white stuff and uh, the snow right now is melting. So it's that kind of marshmallow snow where it's thick and goopy and, and it's hard to get through. It's super slick. I'm hoping that the tundra can just push through and then I can follow. Rob has sent himself up the trail to investigate what we're up against before trying to send us both through and see what's going on. So. I guess we'll hang out here and wait. I'm still in my sandals from my shower. <laughs> so I am not the right one to go hiking in snow right now. Hey, Tell me what happened, you walked uh, up there. Yeah, so I walked up here. I think we could get past the first couple of snow banks here, but it gets really deep further up uh, and then just turns into like big walls of snow. Uh, and we're at 8,600 feet and this trail goes up to 9,200 feet. So I think at this point we're gonna have to turn around um, this would be a great trail to do in the summer because it's really pretty, especially like the Bryce Canyon like rocks up there. But uh, we do have an alternative route uh, a couple of miles back that we can take, hopefully. Well, you heard it from the man himself. We're gonna about face, head back down and take another kind of a bypass, I guess we'll call it. And hopefully that gets us across with little to no issue. Or should I say little to snow issue? <laughs> That's a dirty windshield. Following him up the trail. Oh, there we go. Hey, you can see. Look at that. We're all turned around now, and I get to lead the trail. So, goodbye, dusty windshield for at least a few miles until the turn off where Rob knows better than I do. <laughs> I don't explore around here enough. That's for sure. trespassing sign? Yep. Rob's doing a bit of vanity filming, so we'll turn around in a bit. 
Well, I guess we're not taking Hay Canyon either, so we're going to backtrack and basically go all the way around on pavement to Bryce Canyon. Bryce Canyon, mm -hmm. we've made it. It says it's 61 Fahrenheit, but it's windy. So yeah. on with the puffer, here we go. And Rob's in shorts. I guess I'm not much better, I'm in sandals. Far less wind down here, even though we're doing like the budget tour. Conrad's not used to people filming around him. Every time I talk, he responds to me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were talking to me. I know. Well, I don't want to talk to you. <laughs> if we were really feeling adventurous. Whoa, did you hear that wind? We'd hike down there. Oh, who's this? Yeah, they're oh. here to see the rocks. Oh, sorry. Anyway, that's Wall Street, and uh, I've done it, and I don't want to do it again. Inevitably, a windstorm in the desert turns into a dust storm. So, I think I'm gonna, well, you've seen all you can see, okay? These British gentlemen in their persuasive accents. We're now working our way down Wall Street. I didn't want to do this today. I don't even have water on me. They promised me I wouldn't die. Last time I did this, I had water and it helped. It's cool now. It's winter. Snow on the ground. The wind will lift us out. <laughs> Obligatory selfie thing as I... There you go. This is the part where you contemplate your own existence and decision-making capabilities of, oh yeah, I'll hike down Wall Street, that's no big deal. And then you realize what goes down must come up. That's what Newton said, right? We're out of the park now and looking ahead, it's gonna get windy tonight. We might run into a little bit of wet weather. Tonight's gonna be the worst night of the trip. That's for sure. I mean, what we just drove in on is now covered in rain clouds and it's raining over there. I wonder if we're gonna be able to get away from it and head south and get away from the, the rain and the wind. Hopefully find a cubby to hide in. I was checking uh, the wind routes and it's not looking good. It's looking like we're in for a really windy night, which is probably good because I need to test this tent. Even though I know a big square on top is, is not gonna be great in the wind, it's still nice because everyone wants to know how does it do in the wind. So I'll be able to answer that question after tonight.
telling me something happened to the drone? Yeah. I was following you. I, I don't know, like that close. Uh-huh. I don't know. It'll be on camera. We'll show it. We'll show the clip. I was following you really closely. And I saw something come flying up with the drone from the back of your truck. And then everything stopped working. I couldn't see anything. Did it? But it seems to be... If you turn it off and turn it back on, will it work? I hope so. <laughs> but I think, I don't know, I'm surprised, like, there's no cracks. Do it, did I hit there? Or? Did I hit a sensor with a rock or something? Maybe. But, like, the camera just shut off. Oh. The camera shut off <laughs> while we were driving along high speed, so I just went up. Well, let's and see if it uh, turns back on. Yeah. Watch the gimbal. Oh, that's that's promising. So you gotta look at your controller now and see what it... Gimbal doesn't seem to be working. Yeah, I guess we hit the gimbal. Maybe that's what... Oh. Isn't it a... It's lamp? Yeah. I think we hit the gimbal with a rock. <laughs> Maybe a gimbal recal might fix it. Maybe, we'll try that at camp. If not, we need to go down to, is there a Best Buy in Page? We found a really cool camp spot and uh, it's in this incredible canyon which you're looking at via drone shot right now. Super pretty. You can't see it from camp, the canyon, but we know it's there and we have nothing to do. So we're figuring with the remaining daylight, just keep trucking. Someone needs to buy a new drone and we're Possibly. hoping there's something in Page. Probably so <laughs> if we get that far, he might be able to go shopping for one tomorrow. But what is tomorrow? Oh, it's Easter Sunday. It's Easter Sunday, so who knows? We could drive down Flagstaff. How far is Flagstaff that's from Page? It's like three and a half hours from there. <laughs> Gotta have my drone. That's that's how I feel. That's, that's yeah, what people yeah. watch my channel for. I told you earlier, I don't have the personality. I make up for it with drone shots. <laughs> so go, go subscribe to him if you like <laughs> drone shots. Uh, I'm gonna say we keep driving. All right. Okay? Yeah. Drive on.
know showing that view on your screen doesn't do it all of the justice that it does for me. I mean, this is majestic. So if you wanna visit this spot, you can, because I found this route on Onyx Off-Road, who is the sponsor of today's video. Thank you, Onyx Off-Road. And if you didn't know, I've been using Onyx Off-Road forever. I love them. They have over half a million miles of map trails, and they have trails like this one, which are some of their blue highlighted trails. So we found this because this kind of connects back towards our next national park. And we thought, hey, we wanna find a route that we know is easy. We tapped on it, it was rated two of 10. So, I mean, you could get out here with little to any headache and uh, you can camp at this exact spot that I will not be able to camp at. So do it, click my link in the description, sign up for Onyx Off-Road and save 20% while you're at it because my link saves you a little bit of dough. And then come camp here, send me pictures, make me jealous because I gotta keep rolling. Thank you Onyx Off-Road and uh, let's go. So this is it, this is home for the night. We didn't quite get to Capitol Reef, which kind of sucks, but there is always tomorrow. So tomorrow we have to at least touch Capitol Reef National Park. That's, that's what matters. Tonight, just hanging out, chilling. It was a long day. Uh, on X rated that trail at a two, but after you know however many years since it's been posted, it's probably now a three or a four. There was actually one time I bounced to the bumper. So yeah. Uh, we're a little worn out. I'm beat. I think they're gonna take showers. I'm gonna probably just start a fire and hope that the wind doesn't pick up. One more beautiful day here in Utah. Uh, I am loving this trip. Today we have the goal of hitting our third national park, Capitol Reef. It's the park in the heart of Utah, dead center in Utah. And all we gotta do, we just gotta just dip our toe in that park. We just gotta, and then we've hit number three. After that we have two more parks in Moab to hit. So we've got a lot of journeying to do, many, many journeys to be had. Uh, a lot of driving today because when we went south to Page, we didn't realize how long it would take to get back to central Utah to touch Capitol Reef. So today we're gonna have a lot of fun. We're gonna be in and out of the park a little bit. So Rob, who is our drone master this trip, will be putting the drone up, taking it down, putting it up, taking it down. But he's the man, he has Conrad driving so he can do all the flying and I just get to enjoy the Bronco.
We did it! This is Capitol Reef. What a fun park. I love this park. I think this is one of the more off-road friendly national parks in Utah. Probably this and Canyonlands. I am so stoked. I've never done this trail before and uh, Rob's saying it gets a little bit technical. Nothing that his big old tundra can't do. I mean, come on. I got the Bronco. It can do all this stuff. So uh, I'm looking forward to today. This should be a lot of fun. But here we are in the park, our third national park. So Rob has pulled a Rob and tricked me into hiking again. I thought this was a through trail, but it ends here at this Strike Valley Overlook. Gosh dang you, Rob. It's just like Bryce when he convinced me to hike. So we're gonna go hike and check out some Overlook, he keeps claiming it's really pretty. I'll be the judge. You'll be the judge. Like it if it is. Oh, I'm kidding. I'm only kidding. <laughs> I think Rob was, uh, he was right to make me hike this stupid hike because the view is the opposite of stupid. I mean, look at this. We're on the reef and it just continues for infinity to the horizon. All right, this is worth it. And I think we're actually gonna drive through here. So that's uh, all right. Thanks, Rob. And with the not so subtle hum of my air compressor in the background, this concludes the Capitol Reef episode. Uh, I've got to run home for some family appointments, but then I will meet back up with Rob and Conrad to finish this whole Mighty Five trip. But that does it for this one. So if you like the video, please like the video. If you have a question, leave me a comment. And if you want to hang out again, make sure to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Justin B. McBride.